Hey, this is Glenn and Cameron with How to Make a Living Without a Job. I've talked about creating your own economy. I've talked about having the proper mindset. But I haven't talked about putting those two concepts together. I will in this video. Creating your own financial belief system. Now, I want you to understand this. This is very different than anything that anyone has ever told you before because to give you an idea, I have been a point monster for going on two decades. Point monster is you use your credit card, you get points. The average person doesn't generate enough spend to really get a lot of points unless the credit card company has a promotional offer that gives you like, like Chase Sapphire Preferred, you know, you sign up now you get 40,000 points. That's a plane ticket right there for just signing up. And I was at a wedding, I was discussing this with someone and they just didn't get it. And the reason this person is very intelligent, very educated formally, but people don't understand what I call stacking things in your financial belief channel. If you are spending 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month, 40,000 a month and paying off your credit card, why don't you have a card that gives you rewards? It makes no sense. You could get two, maybe three trips a year from something you're already doing. That's part of a financial education and that's part of a financial belief system because during the Great Recession, or we can call it Depression, cash was king. And before, many years ago, cash was king. But we're back to credit is king. There was about a five-year period where cash was king, but we're back to credit is king again. And the thing is, even billionaires do not even use their own money to fund their projects. They, get, they go to the capital markets, such as the stock market, or bring in other investors. That's how business is done. With your financial belief system, you have to train your brain to recognize opportunities because I've talked to a lot of people in the resale business through consults and such who don't have a credit card. They have a debit card. As Clark Howard likes to say, that piece of trash debit card. I have like four or five debit cards. I carry one and I rarely use it. You know what I use my debit card for? To pull cash out of ATM. That's the only reason that I use my de debit card. I have not bought anything with my debit card going on seven, eight years. Credit card protections are better. I understand that banks have made things better, but why are you doing that when there's a better way? And then, you know, I had one person that's like, well, hey, I have bad credit. And my suggestion was, why don't you fix it? You can do that. I know from experience, you can do that. So with creating your own financial belief system, the first core is actually believing that you deserve a certain level of financial wealth. There are many people, they don't believe in that. They don't believe that they deserve wealth. They don't believe that they should earn money or come into a windfall because their financial belief system, which was a part of indoctrination from working, from going through the industrial school system, because, you know, primary school, you know, elementary school, junior high school, high school, there's a certain methodology that indoctrinates your mind that that's the reason entrepreneurs get so much crap of like, oh, you don't have a job because it goes against the grain of the industrial indoctrination complex. It's just like, that doesn't make any sense. I know that I need to go to a job, that I need to work eight to 10 to 12 hours a day, and I get a paycheck every week or every two weeks. That is the majority of people in the United States of America. That's their financial belief system. And many other places of the world, people have a different financial belief system. I must go out here and turn over these rocks 
wear my fingers to the nubs to plant these seeds and hopefully a drought doesn't come and I'll have food next year. That is their survival financial belief system. They have to make it happen. We as Americans are extremely privileged, extremely. I mean, to the point that it's ridiculous sometimes. And when I hear someone complain, and this goes from the Affordable Health Care Act or Obamacare, which is a branding to make it seem more negative than it really is. You hear all of this whining, all of this complaining. Just spend a week going on to National Geographic and looking how people in 2013 are living in mud huts. Or as, you know, a family of five or six is stacked in 200 square foot room. That's, that's their, the totality of their homestead. Yet here you have people whining about the most insipid stuff. And then you go, it goes back to the financial belief system. Because if you're going to complain, that's one thing. If you're not going to do anything to change the issue that you're complaining about, you're stupid. It doesn't make any sense to complain and complain and complain and complain and do nothing to solve the problem. Which goes back to the financial belief system. Because if what I'm speaking to you is Greek or Latin, you know, some people say Latin's a culture. At one point, Latin had a language. And you're like, what? You are the prime person I'm talking to. What is your financial belief system? Because everything that you do is predicated on operating on the system. The way that you breathe, the way that your blood circulates in your body, you know, your, your, the way that you eat, elimination, all of that is a system. It's not one thing that does one thing. It is several things that work together in concert to get one thing done. So without a belief system, you don't have those components to get you to where you want to be. This is how people with a proper belief system can go from being extremely poor to a billionaire. Or in the case of, uh, I forget his name, but the guy on the Shark Tank started FUBU, he had nothing. Worth $250 million today. The belief system. The financial belief system. And a huge part of the financial belief system has nothing to do with money. Nothing to do with money. Because see, money is a tool. Money is a tool and only a tool. And it's only as good as its user. If you think money's power, you are stupid. Money is a great tool, a wonderful tool. But without the proper intellect behind it, it could be dangerous or it can actually harm you. So with this financial belief system, you, you have to go with core number one. You, you, you deserve money because there are many people that have a belief system that they don't deserve money unless they achieve this benchmark, this milestone. And some of these benchmarks and milestones may never, ever come. Therefore, they're subconsciously blocking the wealth that could be in their life. I see this all the time. I have friends, uh, acquaintances, people I know that are really smart. And they just are like living hand to mouth. Because it's the belief system. Now, understand, there's, diff there's different forms of wealth. You know, the most important is your health. That's an incredibly great asset to have. Good health is incredible. It's fundamental. And it's the most important thing. Because say you, are, you have a billion dollars, right? But you're paralyzed from the neck down. You have enough money to have people take care of you, make sure you get the best medical care, but you can't go take a walk. I am quite sure there are people who have money that are paralyzed, hurt. They will trade that money in for the simple ability to get up out of that wheelchair and go walk around their homes. It's health is just that important. And a lot of people take it for granted. But with your financial belief system, you have to create your own declaration of financial independence and this takes some thought this will take some time for you to sit down and go what is my financial belief system because once you figure out your system because your system is going to be different from mine mine's going to be different from yours 
this guy is gonna be different from this girl's because everyone is operating on a different level, a different vibe, a different set of priorities. And one of the things that I see is many people will say, hey, I want your financial belief system, but they don't know all of the core constituents of that financial belief system. And once they start to get into it, if they don't know those core constituents and they don't have them, you're not gonna get the same results. Matter of fact, you may get disaster because, you know, I have a friend who does real estate investing. He has a totally different outlook on life. He loves moldy, smelly houses. He'll walk into a house like that and go, you can smell the money in here because that's his financial belief system. I've, you know, I've gone out with him. I've seen some stuff. And I've just seen the thing and you know during this quote real estate meltdown he got richer because he was buying he never stopped buying he quadrupled his buying because stuff was dirt cheap his system came from his father who also had a real estate financial belief system so you know you, you have to do some exploration because what many people are doing is seeing the accumulates of someone else's financial belief system and going hey that's for me without really knowing what was involved into getting to that point, which is, like I said, dangerous and it's scary because you'll start and you don't have, long. it's like trying to climb a ladder and half the rungs are missing. And there's not like, you know, the ones that are there are all together, no, it's like two here, then man, there's like eight missing, then there's five up there. That's what you're trying to do because you don't have all the rungs that you need to make that smooth, steady climb. So how does one develop their own financial belief system? Number one, you have to do your life map. Because this is the thing. People, you could chase money and realize money. Because there are some people like, hey, if you chase money, you know, that's, it's not going to work out. That is total bullshit. There are people out there who, who have careers and there are surgeons out there who did it for the money. And these surgeons are excellent. They're incredibly good at what they do, and they did it strictly for the money. So that whole thing, just chasing money, mm. now, I'm, now I'm gonna say it's not the best way based on my financial belief system, but for someone else, it could be the only way. So understand, you can chase money directly, but what happens is when you don't have the life map together, you get the money, you're unfulfilled. You have all the money, you have the house, you have all those things that you want materially, but because you haven't, you know, did the life map deal, you're still feeling unfulfilled. You're still feeling like well, there's things missing. And then you start to take all of that material wealth, that fiscal wealth, and you start trying to fill those internal holes and it will not work. And that's what I tell, you know, I had a uh, cons consult with a client the other day. And first question, I was like, what makes you happy? In your business, what parts of your business that you enjoy doing the most? Because see, I know from experience that if we go ahead and put together a business strategy for him with the aspects of what he enjoys the most front and center, we're going to have way more success than saying, hey, go ahead and work really hard on this thing that you hate when there's all this other stuff you love. And you know, he's got a different situation. And I asked him, what are your life goals? And, you know, when you ask these questions, it came out that the most important thing from an organic standpoint was his family. And he wanted to do more to help the family out and uh, actually put us in a situation where his wife is at home more. So now that we know those core goals, then we can really start to build on them because I wouldn't say, hey, you know, you need to go speak, you know, do a speaking engagement for the next three months on the road. That goes against the core values. That's not going to help the family out. It is not in the manner that he wants to because he likes spending a lot of time with his family. So what we're going to do is design a program for him to do what he wants to do plus spend time with the family. When you start doing this stuff, when you, you put together the life map with the financial strategy, you get a better ride. You know, it's just much, much smoother because there's people out there with money and I'm not going to say that money doesn't buy happiness because it can. It really can. But there are people out there that don't know what makes them happy. 
and they have this money and they're buying all this stuff and they have, all, I saw this in the storage auction business. I would buy a unit and there would be literally wardrobe boxes full of brand new clothes with the tags still on them, never ever worn. That was a sign of a person that was trying to fill those holes with material things because they didn't know what made them happy. I'm serious. You, you got to dig that deep. You really got to get in there and like, what, what is your thing? What is the thing that sets you up? Because all of this works together. Because once the, you start doing the things that fulfill you, and if those things can lead to financial wealth, because if you like making mud pies and they just make you smile from that inside out, there's no market for mud pies. But if you make cakes, cookies, there's a huge market for that. Huge. It's just a matter of metric scale and how you present yourself. So understand, you have to start really asking yourself these questions because there are people like, I'm going back to school. I don't make enough money. How do I get more money? How do I get more money? Wrong question. The right question is, how can I serve as many people as possible? That's the better question. What do I have in me that I can serve a lot of people? What talent, gift, skill, whatever I can do that can serve a lot of people? Because if you have a gift that comes up with this really neat $6 product, but you can serve it to 10 million people, that's $60 million. That's an incredible fortune. Incredible. So understand, you know, everyone's trying to, as Earl Nightingale said, follow the follower. You know, if you were following the leader, it wouldn't be that problem. You would follow the follower. It's just a circular thing. You know, it's just like we're, you're digging this rut. So ask yourself, what can I do to serve a lot of people? What can I put out? How many videos can I put out? Uh, how many books can I write? What can I do that's going to benefit a large group of people? And a large group of people could be as small as 300. It could be 20 if you had the right product. I mean, Tony Robbins, I think he charges like, what, half a mil for it to be on his, to have his, his phone number, to have him on speed dial. You know, at that level, you got six people. That's a great year. So ask yourself, what can I do to serve a lot of people? Because one of the things with resale, which was a strong part of my life, it's very insular. It's very insular. And also, ask yourself this question and really spend some time. What makes you happy? Really, 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 really happy. I mean, you just like a pig and slop. You are just seriously like ecstatic. What is that thing? A lot of people don't know. And you know, some people are like hanging with the family. You know, people all give these generic, general, sounds good in mixed company answers. You know, your thing might be bending chicks over and spanking them. There's a market for that. Trust me. Your thing could be race cars. It could be parachutes. It could be balloons. There's so many things that you could do to make money. But people are like trying to funnel into this narrow area. And it's crowded and everybody's like shoulder to shoulder and the air is thin and people are like, man, this is kind of tough in here. Yet there's this wide open field over there of other stuff <laughs> that no one's doing. And there's money all over that field. Because in one of my videos, the hustle of my money's everywhere. It truly is everywhere. You just have to open your eyes and look for it. So this weekend, take some time. Think about your financial belief system. Think about how it's hurting you. Like if you have a job based, and this is how, and this is a very quick answer for those of you who like, what's a job based financial system? If when you're calculating making money and you start doing per hour calculations, you have a job based financial system. You don't go value based calculations or you know, if I do this project, I'm going to get 50000 for this project type calculations. When you do per hour calculations, you have a job based financial belief system and it will strangle you as you try to become an entrepreneur. Just letting you know that. So think about it. All right. Let me say it again. Think about it. If you like what you saw in this video, you'll love Hustler University. Go ahead. Tap that green bar right there. 
and you'll be golden. Tons of content and you'll learn more than you ever thought you could. All right, this is Glendon Cameron and I will see you on the good side.